Ladies and gentlemen, please make some noise for our Tarzans, if you will, Anton Yetterholm, and of course, Kellen Lutz. They're going to scream every time you guys speak. You know that, yes. right? That's get, what we get, paid them for, right? Get used to that. Get used to that. Some of these guys have been here for about three or four hours as well. Thank you. You Thank saw you. they were free iPads, right? We're, yeah, we're going to find what out. We we'll find out which ones because they will smell a little bit worse than the others. That's all I'm saying. I'm sure you don't. You'll smell lovely. Um, before we start, can I just read you a quick review of Tarzan? All right, this is genuinely a review. Only this if is, it's a positive one. Well, sure. it, here's the thing. It was from a movie website that gave it 10 out of 10. And this is genuinely what they wrote. It's from a German site. It said, the movie is incredible. The acting is stunning. Uh, the 3D was spectacular. And so was the animation. My only issue with the movie is the lead Tarzan wore too many clothes. That is a genuine complaint about the movie Tarzan. Dude, you're in a loincloth. It's an animated loincloth. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> If someone's going to complain that this man's wearing too clothes, I don't know if that's the movie they should be watching. Um, how aware of, uh, the, of the, the Tarzan story? I mean, this is a story that's kind of over 100 years old now, right? How aware were you both of Tarzan, and where was your first kind of meeting with that character? I was pretty aware, as I've just done Tarzan on stage in Phil Collins' Disney's musical Tarzan in Hamburg. So I had all the ape movements going already, and... Uh, yeah, so I've done a few years of Tarzan, actually. It's in my body, in my back, in my knees, I tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Where did you first kind of discover Tarzan? Was it a TV show or, or was it the, 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 the movie that Anton's mentioned? I, I think probably at the age of three or four, my mother gave me a coloring book of Tarzan, of The Lion King, of Mowgli's Jungle Book, and I just fell in love with those iconic roles. And, um, you know, this was way before I even knew that you could be an actor, way before... I, I didn't have cable back then, and I just fell up. I, I, I was enamored by the stories, by uh, the animal kingdom, and everyone's role as far as the heroes go. And then um, when I was approached for the role, I auditioned for it. I used this guy's, like you said, his YouTube clips to uh, try and figure out how do I run on all fours and uh, to, to act and portray Tarzan with his walk and his speech. So thank you for the homework oh. and the research. Well, it's quite interesting because obviously, uh, as, as many of you will discover when you get to see the movie, Anton plays the slightly younger Tarzan. Obviously, yep. you, you take over that, that, that role uh, through the film. So you've both got to be very similar in movement. So was it quite important? I mean, did you get to work together within the filming of the movie? Because obviously, you're playing the same role. You're not in yeah. scenes together. Uh, yeah, obviously, we didn't have much seats. I, I wish we had, but uh -huh. we didn't. But uh, yeah, as you said, I'm playing the younger one, which is a bit more physical. He's on his four all the time, quadruped, and he's just, you know, very flexible, r very playful, which fits my body language pretty good. And then Kellen comes in and, you know, the muscle com muscles comes in and we didn't know finishes we off, didn't you know. <laughs> we never noticed the muscles, buddy. I don't know. So it's I, no, but I think it's a good mix because it gives him, you can see the journey uh, from when he, you know, arrives in the jungle pretty good. So, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about the, the, the difference in this, because the Edgar Rice Burroughs stories, it, it is quite a transformation. This is genuinely Tarzan for a, a new generation. You know, there are going to be a bunch of people in, in sort of 10 years' time that go, the first Tarzan movie they saw is, is this one. And that's quite, that's quite a big responsibility for you guys. I think it's really great how you put that because, you know, this story is so timeless that, um, you know, when my grandkids, when I have kids who have kids, um, you I know. I think there's a few people <laughs> hoping to help you make that happen as well. Hands? No? Uh. <laughs> hey -o. Um Filthy. <laughs> Filthy. Uh, you know, it's just such a great story, and I grew up loving it. Uh, I'm glad that we have our version now, and it's more contemporary, more modern, deals with the same eco-friendly issues of s trying to stop deforestation and, and poaching, um, fighting for, for justice. And, uh, you know, the story is just a timeless one that will be repeated. And, you know, with our story, we have helicopters, we have big skyscrapers, we have stuff that's fresh to our, our time period. I mean, it is, it is, you know, it's a romance but it's also an action. I mean, there is a lot of romance in this in this movie, but it, it is also an action movie as well. How physical was it not just being Tarzan, but taking on that action part? Because I don't want to give too much away about the film, but it does take on a, a kind of action movie in that second half, I would say. Very physical. I mean, 
we're talking, this is actually how we spend our days. We're walking on our knees, on our f you know, doing crazy tars and jumps, living like monkeys for a few weeks. And, you know, our body's shaped like them. Like, um, Kellen was this big when he came. When he left, he was more like bendable. He was so, he, your body really like took a journey, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, yeah, I felt that from day one when you yeah. get into ape boot camp, I yeah. feel like. No, and it was so physical. Muscles I never knew I had. Yeah. When you're on all fours quadrupeding and then running, I, I needed to do more yoga to prepare myself. But I loved it. Um, definitely more action. I think the hardest thing and the most fun we had on set was even in the romance when Janet and I have that kiss or you know when you're fighting some of the other apes you you wear this facial cam and so you're you're acting in motion capture it's just like doing a play you're acting they're they're recording your movement but it's like wearing a face plate or like giant braces so you're going in for the kiss and as you're kissing you're trying not to when you release like get stuck on the cameras and then have to redo it uh, that happened quite a bit, and then you get stuck, and you're like yanking each other's heads left and right. Um, is it that? Yeah, that was one of the difficult. Does parts. that kill the romance though? When you're sort of going, we're in the moment, and you're just about to kiss, and it's then like you having a really cameras. big brace. <laughs> I, re I re like. <laughs> Sorry. So uh, let's talk about the motion capture quiz because when this film came out, I mean, we talk about this as an animation, but this is animation that takes it to a next level. It really does. It's that thing where it's it doesn't feel like animation. You truly believe these characters. It is animation with such depth of realism and it's in an an a way that we haven't seen in animation before I think that's what pushes the boundaries for this film um, does that make it difficult for you guys in motion capture well I think you have seen it Avatar led the way with that and using the technology that you know James Cameron developed um, he brought souls to the CGI and to the animation he and that's what one of the advantages to doing motion capture is you're using humans, you're capturing their facial expressions, the little clicks that they do from the raising of their eyebrows that make each character unique in essence. And, you know, to, to have that, it, it really assists the animators create these characters because you're giving them a framework to work off of. I mean, I've seen some of the stuff, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but when, when, when the motion capture, I'm guessing, as you mentioned, you've got the camera in front of you and you're covered in dots and stuff like that. Is that right? But can you see what you're doing? Because you have no sets. You have no, you know, what are you acting off? Yeah, I think it takes more. You know, it's, you have to be, we had to be all creative, you know. We had weird stuff being the jungle. We, we used everything we could find just to, you know, use it as... Uh, yeah, what, what's ever really, like plastic toys. I remember one scene where I grab a snake really, really quick. They actually had a plastic snake toy to, for that scene. You know, we, have to, we had to be creative to see that jungle in front of us because uh, obviously it's hard. when We were actually in a room like this with cameras. Everything is just black and white, and we just had to create it ourselves. So can you go back to the monitor and see what you just did? Do you see yeah. exactly what you just acted Yes like? and no, because it's just a skeleton. Like, you really are just this skeleton of dots that are connected to see this stick figure. So you're watching yourself, and you're seeing the playback of what you're doing. But again, it's nothing from nothing close to what the animators create. And, yeah, I, I just remember scenes like you had the snake. I had to wrestle an alligator you'll see in the movie where... They just blew up a, an alligator raft, and they're like, all right, go, Kellen, and you really have to use your imagination. You're creating this world, and it's very much theater in the realm, which has its advantages. You're able to use your imagination and, and act and really just visualize what you're seeing. But we would have, like, pool noodles as, like, the trees, and Anton would have to, like, move it, and they would, like, slap them in the face. And it's, uh, it's really fun to see what you can use and then how they overlap that with the CGI to create the world. I don't know if you slightly brushed over it, but are you basically saying that you wrestled a blow-up alligator? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I yep. felt you tried to escape that slightly and make that sound slightly... <laughs> I, wi I, I wish they had that YouTube clip because it was just <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> you're making the noises and this thing's not moving and you're just <laughs> squeezing the, the air out of this raft. Um, again, I, I don't want to give too much away, but we have to talk about the Tarzan roar. There is a bit of a Tarzan roar. Do you practice that? Like... Do you go on set and just go, I'm going to do the Tarzan roar now? Or are you in, like, I don't know, your bedroom at home going, I'll give this the little... Rrr. I don't want to do it, but it's it's a little different to the to the Tarzan roar that I think probably we're expecting, but it's still pretty forceful. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, for me, I didn't realize or know that it was trademarked, so we couldn't oh really? actually use the actual Tarzan cry. 
um, that's so famous. Um, and I don't know if that's where the rights go. go. I don't know if the live action one um, got those rights for the trademark for the, the cry. Uh, but for us, we had to create our own, which is quite similar. And my character, I remember it was like the second to last day of shooting that Ron Hard was working with a, a composer to create the, the, the cry digitally, whatever format they wanted. And then they would just give me the MP3 format. I'd listen to it a couple times. I'd climb up my little mountain ledge and then let loose. And I don't remember it right now. It's been a year and a half, and I did it maybe three times. But... Uh, but definitely one of those iconic moments in my life, knowing that I got to do it in our own way. Um, and of course, taking on the role of Tarzan, I mean, uh, you know, we've seen some stuff that Reinhardt, the director, was talking about, that this is a 10-year passion project for that man. How many years of development and work was it with you? When did you come on board? And, and, and at which stage was the film in production? Yeah, Reinhardt had the most fantastic story about how he lived with gorillas in the jungle a few years back, and that's where the that's where he realized he need he needed to put them on screen. And then Constantine Film were looking for a good you know a good script, and they said, "Wait, let's let's do another Tarzan." And that's how it all started, really. And I think you can tell in this film because it's a lot of it's more animalistic than the other than the old Tarzans, I think. And it's fantastic how you the gorilla work is just amazing. Our Peter Elliott, our um, choreographer, or whatever you say, ape movement master, is just fantastic. Um, my journey with Tarzan, well, it started a bit earlier than Kellan's. I, I lived in Germany, worked there, and I did Tarzan on stage. And that's how I got involved in the project for Constantin Film. And then Kellan, come along. Yeah, please. Yeah, then... Uh, yeah, they had been working on it for a good couple years in production after all the research and development. Um, and you had shot stuff previously that then they were overlapping. And then I auditioned for it. I got the call. I flew out. And it was only a month and a half for my shooting. Like, it was quite easy, quite fun. There's no hair, no makeup. You just put on the, the superhero suit with all the markers on it. And you go play. You just go play in this imaginary world. And they already had a lot of footage shot that Anton did. And, um, you know, I'm just... I got to finish it, which was great. I mean, how do you work that into your, your schedule now? Because obviously we know you're doing Expendables 3 and stuff like that. And, and, and I mean, presumably the change for you was the, the Twilight movies. Was that where, where things really did change for you and, and, and roles come in? And is it now just fitting in? And was this a role that you kind of go, hey, listen, if I can make this work in a couple of months, I, I'd love to do it. Or was it something that you would fight to do? Uh, yeah, I would fight to do it. I, I have been so blessed being a part of the Twilight Saga and allowing that to build a name for yourself, even though I said a couple lines in each movie. Um, you know, very, very blessed to be a part of that chapter in my life. And that just really paved the road. And that allowed me to then chase passion projects. So instead of fighting to get work, it's more about, look, life is short. I'd rather, you know, do projects and say no to ones that I don't need. You know, all thanks to Twilight and allowing me to have that safety net. And just really, uh, Tarzan was... Like I said, a dream role. Same with Hercules, same with Exodus 3. So it's really great to get to do what you want to do instead of doing what you, you have to do. And I think that really just adds to the passion and your energy towards the press and traveling and meeting all you guys. Thank you for coming out here. And, uh, you know, it's just something that I'll, I'll never forget and just feel so blessed. Don't thank them for coming out here. They've been out here for hours waiting for you. They're borderline stalking, especially this one down here. I'm just saying, just watch for her. That's all I'm saying. Uh, we're going to open up some questions to you guys in just uh, just a few moments. So I'm sure you have a few questions for these guys. Um, but just one very quick thing, Anton. We we have to. Li you're going to have to let you go soon because yeah. you're you're performing tonight. I'm right? on stage tonight in something pretty different from Tars and his Les Mis. Actually, just around the corner. So yeah. Oh, well it's just around the corner. We'll keep him for a little. We'll you're all welcome, for a bit longer. guys. You're all <laughs> <laughs> Three iPods over there and iPads. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and once you've got the iPod, you can download the musical version later, and then we haven't got to go and watch it, so we can stay here with Kellen. Um, can we talk about the computer technology in this movie, though? Uh, were you aware, when you're making it, of what your characters were going to look like um, at the end of the day? Because, you know, we mentioned this as a 10-year passion project for the director, but he also mentioned, uh, when we'd heard from him before, that he felt like he'd made this movie four times. You know, he does it in storyboard, he, he does it with you guys, and then, he, then it's all off to the animation to, to do it again. So is there a lot of trust in a director to know what this movie's going to look like when you guys leave it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we had no idea, really. You know, we could see that it was a... 
huge project when we just enter that room, you know, so many people, so much technique, more than here, I guess, more than more in this Apple store, I think, because it was just amazingly big, like, it was so much, you know, all the newest high-tech stuff, but, you know, we did our thing, we played around, we had so much fun, and then I guess they did all the hard work, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, I think the the biggest struggle was trying to figure out how cartoonish they wanted to build these characters. You, know, you can have them have the big cartoon eyes or, you know, or not. You know, you can have them look more like ourselves. And it's it's really, it's hard for me to watch movies like Twilight where I see myself and I know what happened behind the scenes. You know, the funny moments, you know, when Rob fell or, you know, and when I messed up my one word line, you know, <laughs> something like that. It's, uh, it's, it's hard just to lose yourself in the story. And I... What I loved about Tarzan is that I see my mannerisms, I see my facial expressions, and I see parts of the face that is Kellen, but then it's completely different. So I can actually sit there on the edge of my seat and lose myself in the story and in the action. Um, so it, you know, I'm, I'm glad how it turned out. I look buff, so that's awesome. <laughs> um, do you kind of look at the pictures and you like call the director a few months bigger, later? Bigger right? packs, Maybe, come on. Yeah, he's way 12 bigger pack, than 12 pack, 12 pack. Look see. at those guns. Could you not at any point, I mean, God, look at the state of you. You both look incredible. Uh, but do you not kind of go now in the world of CGI that you could just let it go a little bit and go and have a couple of donuts and go, hey, it doesn't matter. They'll fix that in post. That's what, that's what was helpful. You wear these, these, these Lycra skin-tight wetsuit sort of suits. And, I mean, I didn't really work out. I didn't have to. It was genius. That's why I loved it. <laughs> What about the stunts in the film? Um, do you have to do your own stunts? Because obviously if you're motion capture and then, uh, you know, a guy comes in and he's a different physicality to you guys, that's going to bring something different to the screen, presumably. So well, that I mean, mean he's a genius in parkouring. So, I mean, take it. Well, I have to say that every scene was pretty much a stunt scene, I think, for both of us. Because, you know, as I said, it was all always on the floor doing those crazy runs. So everything was so physical that it's hard to draw the line where we're stunned, where it's stunts and where it's just acting, because it was all so physical. Where do they allow you to do that, though? Because obviously, if you guys get hurt, that's that's a big issue, you know? And like a lot of these movies, and particularly probably with The Expendables 3 as well, you know, there's a limit to what you're going to let Stallone jump off of, because if he hurts himself, we're in a few problems. And that's the same. If you're the, you know, you guys are Tarzan, and Tarzan's got a bad foot, it's going to be awkward. Well, it's in Germany, so it's all very safe, you know. It was, you know, everything is very, <laughs> <laughs> very safe. But I, um, we had a, I had a stunt guy in doing a flight, which you see in the trailer, where he jumps and catches the rope. And I just said, I have to do that one. So, Rhino was very open with us trying out stuff too. And I think, pretty much everything you see is pretty much in between us. That's what you see. Uh, it's not many stunt artists in there actually. I think that's the Ron Hart really wanted to cast physical actors in it. So, you know, ones who, and I love doing stunts. I, it's what my forte is. I love ac action movies. And, uh, you know, it's really fun learning new techniques, adding it to your resume, and um, just pushing yourself. Um, we're going to open it up to these guys if you're happy with that. And we will get some questions because these guys have been waiting a long time to talk to you. Does anybody have a question? for our actors that uh, there's a lady right at the back can we get the microphone to the back there she's been waving for a while and she's got that super duper zoom lens camera which can see all up our noses she's I'm quite scared by that camera I'll be honest with you <laughs> it doesn't hi, reach what's that your question? Um, hi thank you for coming um, my question is with regards to your the beginning of your careers really um, I just want to know how easy or challenging was it for you to actually enter into the acting field and when did you actually take off i guess you go mate you, uh, you know <laughs> it's it's the toughest job in the world i feel like uh, i mean again i mean i'm we aren't brain surgeons or anything like that but the strain that mentally you have to be strong cuz you get you get told no a million times before that first yes and you really have to have the passion for it a lot of people move to la um, for the fame, for the money, and that's the wrong reasons. You know, if you really love what you do, and I found a passion at the age of 18. I didn't grow up knowing I wanted to act. I didn't know what acting really was. And for me, I was going to school for chemical engineering, and which is so <laughs> another left field to, to pursue acting. But I, I loved extra work, and no one loves extra work, which is background work, which is the bottom of the barrel. And I loved it because... It was 
just fun for me. And I knew if I loved the worst part of the job that I would be obsessed with the the, the higher highest of the highs. And for me, that just helped me uh, push along and to stay dedicated to the craft. I wanted to learn as much as I could. I felt like I started late, even at age 18. There's a lot of young actors who start from, uh, you know, the their little boy or their youth. And, you know, so I really uh, learned a lot about myself. Uh, my mother wasn't too happy because I threw my full ride away. But look, it's your life. It's your dreams. You got to follow your own passions. And at the end of the day, if it didn't work out, at least I knew, at least I, knew I tried. And I think if you have your feet on solid ground, you're... You know, you have a good head and you have good values that you'll you'll do it right. It might take longer. And, uh, you know, who wants to take shortcuts in life? I'm all about the journey. I'd rather have it take, you know, it's been 10 years to reach my, my dreams of portraying my heroes like Tarzan, Hercules, working with all my action heroes in Expendables. 10 years. Um, but I, I wouldn't trade that for the world because the journey is what means the most versus getting lucky, getting your big break day one and then, a lot of people lose themselves. They really do. So for me, it was it was a long process. Um, it was a fighting process, but uh, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. What do your parents think, if you don't mind me asking now? Uh, I mean, my dad is like hardcore into gossip magazines. Every new gossip, <laughs> is it, he's like, you're dating so-and-so. I'm like, where'd you hear that? Because I'm, ne I'm never on the Internet. I'm never Googling myself. I, I just don't care. I don't need that gratification most of the time it's all gossip and negative anyways but he'll call me up you know with some new gossip and I'm like dad stop <laughs> um and my mother you know she I think she was just fearful of the unknown you know she she's I love my mother to death she's Wonder Woman to me and when I had to decide and follow my heart um there's a little distance there and I think she was just scared on my behalf but you know, she raised me right. I didn't get lost in anything. And, you know, obviously she, she raised me with discernment. And so it was really nice to see the, the warning flags or the red flags that were coming my way. Um, it's, it happens. You know, people, there's sharks in the industry. It's a, it's a dark industry. It's easy to lose yourself and uh, to find yourself in the wrong situations. But it's, you know, it's good to uh, have great people that you can trust, have a loving family. And as soon as I started not doing uh, any... Uh, any bad work, you know, there's a lot of, uh, I don't want to say it vocally, but there's there's other <laughs> sides to the industry that you could fall into. And uh, as soon as I got the comeback with my, Michael Patrick King, uh, starring Lisa Kudrow, who my mom's a diehard fan of my friends and Lisa, she uh, saw that, wow, he can actually do this. And wow, there's actually, if he's working with Lisa Kudrow, it must be a good show. So uh, thank you, Lisa, for that. God bless friends. Uh, let's get another question. Does anyone else have a question? Uh, what about the lady over there? Can we get a microphone to this lady over there? Who's just recording the whole thing on her iPhone. Um, how did you first react when you found out that like you got the role? Or yeah. <laughs> and what were you most excited about? I, we're going to get subtitles for her because I think she's just a little giddy. No, we got it. With you. We got it. I got a lovely call from, from uh, my agent in Germany. And uh, then I actually read on Hollywood reports that Kellan was going to share the part with me, which, you know, that's how I heard about it. You found out from your mum, presumably, or your dad read a yeah, gossip. Yeah, my dad, page. yeah. My dad, pretty much. He's like, oh, you're doing Tarzan. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to. Um, yeah, you know, I, I auditioned for it, and um, Anton had already shot some stuff, and he was Tarzan. I didn't know that part of the story. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's a blessing to work with a talented actor who is very humble enough to share the limelight and to share this this character. We had a younger Tarzan, little baby one, and you know we have Anton, and you know then I'm I'm a little bit older, you know, pretty much playing the same role. I'm just not as talented on all fours, so maybe maybe, maybe I'm better on two feet than you. So the worst bit is that's the quote that will make every newspaper in our country. Yeah. That and the alligator thing. The right? alligator thing and you on all fours. I hate to say it. I'm so sorry, buddy. Um, let's, I think we're going to move on to another question. <laughs> uh, let's get another question. What about this lady right here in the middle there? Hi. Um, I have a question because, well, obviously. Um, this is so heavily like animated. Obviously, it's still very physical for you guys. But do you, um, there's probably a lot more work that goes into like the voice part. Do you think that that was so much harder than 
like not like a regular movie, but when it's actually like you on screen and you're saying your lines and this is still physical, but then when you go and do the voice, you have to put so much like more emotion into it to portray so like what you're doing because you said you can't really see yourself. So like how hard was that? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's very hard. Some people, some people love ADR and doing the voiceover work. For me, I don't mind doing it because you get a second chance. A lot of times if you're focusing on the action or a certain scene, um, you know, you maybe just don't realize. Like with Hercules, I, I, my accent was in and out. Just because I'm working with an Australian actor, a French actor, actress, a, you know, an English actor. So um, I'm glad I was able to redo it all, to find my voice, and to just be constant with that. But with Tarzan, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's very action-packed, especially during the fights and the grunts. I mean, you, you also have to, I mean, much like any movie, but you have to mimic your lips. So, you know, in your dialogue, if you say something like the whole... Me Tarzan, you Jane. Me Tarzan, you Jane. Like we said that like 15 times, and when you're actually shooting it, your energy is already there. That you you have that natural excitement. It's a bit fabricated when you're in this little sound room and it's dark, and you don't have another actress to play off of, and you're just trying to mimic your voice while looking up there, while looking at your lines, and um, it's it can be tough, but again, fun. It's great to have that second chance. Does that give you both the chance to ad lib, or does that mean you've got to s stick very much to the script? Yeah, they spend so much time animating these characters to what we did that you can't ad lib. They wouldn't have enough time to <laughs> ad lib your your character. They're all they're cursing you in the computer room like six months later. Um, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're so sorry that we've got to let these guys go. Uh, one is on stage very very soon. You guys got to check it out. He's phenomenal. Like it's. It's amazing watching them. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the movie is out in just a few days' time. Make sure you go and catch it. It is absolutely phenomenal. It's Tarzan and our Tarzans, Anton and Kellen. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming.